Hi, I'm Francis. I work on distributed tracing at Shopify, and I'm also a maintainer of OpenTelemetry Ruby. In 2016, Shopify built its own distributed tracing pipeline. Last year, we started migrating our entire tracing pipeline to OpenTelemetry. This talk provides a historical background for that move, why we chose to build upon OpenTelemetry, our migration strategy, and what's gone right and wrong so far. Let's start by taking a look at what we built back in the dark ages, before OpenTelemetry. I'm going to assume familiarity with basic concepts of distributed tracing, like traces, spans, and tags. There's four major things we need to implement distributed tracing. Firstly, we need to instrument our own services. At Shopify, most of our services are Rails applications, so we needed instrumentation in Ruby. Secondly, all the services need to agree on how to propagate trace context between themselves. If service A makes a request to service B and we want to trace that request, A needs to pass along information about the trace and the client span so that B can create a child span that's part of the same trace and has the correct parent. Thirdly, we need a way to collect the spans that services have recorded and send them to a trace storage backend. In some cases, this is subsumed by the backend itself. And finally, we need that backend and some mechanism to search and view traces. When we started, there wasn't much publicly available for Ruby. The Zipkin gem had been abandoned and development had shifted to open Zipkin, but it was pretty early days. Jaeger hadn't been open sourced yet and it lacked instrumentation for Ruby anyway. Open tracing didn't exist for Ruby and when it showed up later, the API didn't feel especially idiomatic to us. More generally, instrumentation tended to be tightly coupled with the storage backend. While some commercial tracing backends existed, there wasn't a clear winner, and they all provided their own instrumentation libraries. Given this landscape, we did the obvious thing and wrote our own instrumentation library. The story for context propagation was similar. The headers tended to be specific to the instrumentation. B3 multi-header from Zipkin and xCloud trace context from Stackdriver were the two obvious choices. We didn't want to pay for a backend while we were building out this functionality. Stackdriver trace and Datadog trace were free at the time with some limitations. Zipkin was also a possibility, but we didn't want to get bogged down managing infrastructure while we were building. Stackdriver trace didn't require a collector. Datadog trace had an agent, which was not too painful to deploy as a daemon set at the time. We ended up building a custom instrumentation library inspired by open tracing. It had auto-instrumentation for all the things we commonly use at Shopify, Elasticsearch, Redis, Memcache, Rails, MySQL, and so forth. We had just moved into GCP, and it seemed like a good idea to leverage GCLB's tracing support, so we used xCloud trace context for propagation. We never really got much out of that, and we migrated our load balances to Nginx, but by then we were stuck with that propagation format, and we had no good reason to change it. Finally, we hedged our bets for a while with backends and had dual exporters to Datadog and Stackdriver. This was a good MVP for tracing. We spent some time promoting it inside Shopify and smoothing out the on-ramp for services to add tracing. In most cases, it was as simple as seeing a warning in the service catalog, clicking a button to autofix, which opened a PR to add the dependency and an initializer, with a whole lot of friendly advice and information, then merging that PR and deploying. We soon stopped riding two horses and committed to Stackdriver. At that point, the architectural pressure came from a mismatch between backend API rate limits and the massive horizontal scale of our applications. Google bumped the limits for us well past what they publicly advertised, but it wasn't enough to keep up with our growth. We had to bite the bullet and build a collection pipeline to buffer spans, batch them, and send them at a cadence that respected the backend rate limits. Our solution was a trace proxy running as a daemon set that simply dumped all incoming spans into PubSub. We then had horizontally scalable forwarders that translated the spans into Stackdriver's format. We took advantage of this architectural change to define our own format, which was essentially our in-memory format described as protobuf. Nothing particularly innovative, but it gave us independence from the back end fairly early on. This architecture had a couple of unexpected benefits. Firstly, we had a bottleneck that allowed us to massage spans in different ways, like redacting PII, cleaning up span names, and remapping tag keys to things that the backend understood and treated specially. 
It also let us easily migrate between versions of the backend API without interfering with the services that were using our instrumentation. Secondly, we could experiment with different backends, an experiment we did. By building additional translators and adding them as different subscribers, we could easily bake off different backends with the same data. I think we had five backends running simultaneously at one point. We tried Zipkin, Jaeger, New Relic's tracing service, SignalFX, LightStep, and Omnition alongside Stackdriver. So this was all pretty cool. It gave us a ton of flexibility, and if you squint, it doesn't look a whole lot different from OpenTelemetry's architecture or Jaeger's architecture. The one thing that should jump it out at you right away is that it is all custom. We had to maintain our own instrumentation, our own agent, our own translators, and we had to manage and scale this thing as our platform and company grew. And because this was all custom, as third-party software like CoreDNS and Nginx added tracing, we couldn't turn on tracing and just have it work. And because this was all custom, we couldn't support services written in different languages. Although we're known as a Ruby shop, we have quite a bit of Go, some Rust, some Node, some Python, some Java. We built a Go tracing package early on that was compatible with open tracing, but that was it for cross-language support. And every time we wanted to try out a new backend, we had to write custom translators and learn about new and interesting limitations as we often directed a fire hose of spans at a pool of proprietary collectors or satellites. There was a lot of unnecessary redundancy and a lot of impedance mismatch. And really, when you think about it, all this custom instrumentation and translation that we built and all these vendors also built are really just commodities. We weren't the only ones to realize this. Where open tracing, spec an API, and semantic conventions, Google built a set of batteries included instrumentation libraries for a bunch of languages with pluggable exporters called Census. They open sourced this as OpenCensus, and some other folks got on board, including Omnition, who built a collector for the project. This was just what we needed. Ruby isn't exactly Google's thing, so that library was in rough shape, but the JavaScript instrumentation filled a gap for us, and the Go instrumentation was much better than what we'd built. We started with Go and built a simple exporter and context propagation to make it work in our environment. We then turned our attention to the collector. In all honesty, we first experimented with the collector in the context of trying out Omniscient as a backend. So we slotted it in as just another forwarder at the end of our pipeline. As we gained confidence, however, it became clear that the collector belonged at the heart of our pipeline. Its ability to receive trace data in different formats over different protocols solved our first problem, receiving traces from third-party applications. We still had to figure out context propagation, but it was a big step forward. First, though, we had to migrate our pipeline. We did this in a couple of steps. We started by building a receiver for our custom trace format. We already had most of the code for this in our trace proxy, conveniently written in Go, so we just had to port that, add some configuration, and translate to the collectors in memory format we deployed the collectors in each cluster. We then needed to shift traffic to the new pipeline. We set up two export pipelines in the collectors, one to Stackdriver and one to Omniscient. We added a reverse proxy to the trace proxy that simply forwarded requests to the upstream collectors. And we added a mechanism in the trace proxy that let us dynamically control the traffic split by adjusting the config map that was mounted as a file, config trace proxy proxy percentage. After shifting the traffic, we ran in this shape for a long time with the proxy percent set to 100 and slowly removed our safety nets, deleting all the custom forwarders, removing the old pub sub topic and subscribers. At this point, we solved our second problem, instrumentation in different languages. Our Elasticsearch team built a tracing plugin using the OpenCensus Java instrumentation and a GraphQL proxy team added tracing using the OpenCensus JavaScript instrumentation. In both cases, we only needed to implement context propagation. And the collector solved our third problem, maintaining custom translators for every backend. We only needed to implement a single translator from our custom format to the collector's in-memory format. Ultimately, we wanted to replace that custom format as well and our custom instrumentation in Ruby. So we decided to take on the challenge of maintaining open census Ruby. Our plan was to polish the existing code and then port all our auto instrumentation. Right around the time we decided to take over maintenance of the OpenCensus Ruby project, 
the Open Census and Open Tracing folks got together and realized that there was a lot of overlap between the projects, and they decided to join forces to build a third standard called Open Telemetry. So we got on board and started the Open Telemetry Ruby project. Spoiler alert, after a year of development, we're almost ready to use it in production. Now we're into the meat of our journey to Open Telemetry. Halfway into our migration to Open Census, we had to make this shift. It was awkward to continue with the Open Census collector because it had been placed into maintenance mode as the code was copied over to the Open Telemetry project, and all development effort quickly shifted there. Also, by this time, we had our own fork of Omniscience fork of the upstream repo, and maintaining all this was a huge effort. So while half our team started building Open, Tele Open Telemetry Ruby, the other half started porting our components over to the Open Telemetry collector. We deployed the collector into the same namespace and then pointed the Kubernetes service at the Open Telemetry collector instead of the Open Census collector. Obviously, we did this starting with less important clusters, gave it some soak time, and then gradually migrated more to more and more important clusters. I'm glossing over the stress and anxiety implicit in this process, but it worked well. The downside is that we have an endpoint called OC Collector or Open Census Collector Production that's actually backed by the Open Telemetry Collector, but it felt like an acceptable trade-off. The next challenge was to replace our trace proxy daemon set with the Open Telemetry Agent. The agent is really just a collector with a smaller footprint and a slimmed down pipeline. If you peer closely, you'll see an additional processor we built here called Resource Labeler. This grabs metadata about the node and its environment from a couple of different places and augments spans with that information. Things like the node name, the cluster name, GKE version, availability zone. Something like this now exists in the upstream project and we should probably move to that at some point and delete another piece of custom code. In the meantime, a team that owned the Shopify script's runtime engine wanted to add tracing. The runtime engine was written in Rust, and coincidentally, the OpenTelemetry Rust SIG had just released an alpha of the SDK in Rust. So with minimal handholding for us and an awesome can-do attitude from them, we, Shopify, a hardcore Rails shop, shipped OpenTelemetry to production for the first time in Rust. This was actually awesome and a great validation of OpenTelemetry's value. The most recent thing we've built is an OTLP exporter from our custom instrumentation library. OTLP is OpenTelemetry's native protocol for telemetry data. In large part, it's a refinement of the Open Census protocol, but it's a huge step forward in computational efficiency, and it is also a lot friendlier to load balances. Our journey hasn't been all sunshine and roses. Previously, I glossed over the stress and anxiety of switching from the Open Census Collector to the Open Telemetry Collector. Much of that was unwarranted, and the transition was actually pretty smooth. The agent has given us far more grief, though. We wanted the agent to listen on the same port as a trace proxy for our custom protocol, so the initial deployment was nerve-wracking. We, uh, we relied on client applications buffering spans and reconnecting to cope with brief outages on each node as we deployed the agent and removed the trace proxy. Daemon set deploys in our environment are terrible for everyone, and rolling out a change across all clusters often takes a day and a lot of hair loss. COVID hair helps me hide some of that. While the trace proxy used well under 128 meg of RAM, we needed two gig for the agent. Given how tightly we pack our nodes, we couldn't afford to give it more CPU than the trace proxy had, but by golly, it needs more. CPU throttling in the agent has been a major pain point. The crux of the problem is that it needs to deserialize from the receiver's format, copy and translate to the in-memory format, and then copy and translate to the exporter's format before reserializing. This is improved, but only if all parts of the pipeline are OTLP. Those improvements come at the cost of breaking changes in the collector. It has been a struggle to keep pace with internal API changes in our custom receiver. Until recently, there was also some churn in metrics which increase stress and anxiety when rolling out upgrades. And OTLP, while amazing, has experienced churn of its own. We successfully advocated for declaring the trace portion of the protocol as stable, but in the meantime, we had to deal with churn in the spec and mismatches between the upstream proto definitions and the version vended by the collector. 
That vendoring has brought problems of its own since the vended version is the in-memory format in the collector, but it can't be used from externally developed components. There's some general misunderstanding of the OTLP spec in SDK exporters for different languages, but those should be ironed out soon with some spec clarifications. Now that OTLP has settled down a bit, we're working to use it in production. We're hoping for large efficiency gains from a pure OTLP pipeline. If we get them, that might save the agent, but the operational overhead of maintaining the agent daemon sets means we'll probably remove them. Our strategy there is to use Envoy for link aggregation in the client clusters and for client instrumentation to collect metadata and populate the resource tags themselves. Once we migrate all our services to export in OTLP, we can start deleting more custom code and eventually consider building directly from the upstream repo. OpenTelemetry Ruby is used by some companies in production. We need to curate it a little for our environment, but we're close to trialing it in a few services. Our previous success with OpenCensus means that we have a few services instrumented with OpenCensus that we need to migrate to OpenTelemetry. The last big hurdle we have to fully migrate to OpenTelemetry is replacing our context propagation with the W3C trace parent format. This is a default for OpenTelemetry and should see increasing adoption across many third-party applications. More specific to our environment, we have a lot of clusters across fewer regions, and rolling out code or configuration changes to the collectors across all of them is a maintenance headache, even without the agent. In particular, some clusters are pretty small and don't auto-scale for reasons, so we invariably have to babysit deploys in clusters that our team doesn't own. There's also a lot of variability in traffic across these clusters, so one size really doesn't fit all. Instead, we're building out regional pools of collectors to replace the cluster local pools. These will be in clusters that our team owns, giving us a lot more control. Finally, all this work with OpenTelemetry has allowed us to explore custom analysis using BigQuery as our storage backend. We've written a Jaeger plugin for BigQuery, so we can use it for search and visualization. And we have a few expert users who use the BigQuery console for some pretty interesting analysis that simply isn't possible with commercial services. We learned a lot from this process. Hopefully you can take advantage of some of these hard-won lessons. The first lesson is that a migration like this takes a long time. Particularly in our case, we had a very small team and OpenTelemetry was new and changing rapidly. Some of that is likely easier now, but not all of it. The second lesson is that working backwards from the end of the pipeline worked really well. We could simply extend our pipeline to use a collector, then once we were confident, we introduced it into production clusters, then gradually switched the pipeline over to use it, then removed the old pipeline. None of this impacted any other services or resulted in any significant data loss. At that point, we already gained significant value and could replace other parts somewhat at our leisure. The third lesson is that fine-grained traffic migration. This process let us work a cluster at a time and in comfortable increments, which reduce both stress and the magnitude of any potential outage. Finally, trace instrumentation and collection is commoditized. There's no value in building or maintaining this yourself. The real value is at the end of the pipeline in analysis and monitoring and alerting. There's a lot of innovation and churn and consolidation in this space. It's good to hedge your bets. Open telemetry helps you do that. Thanks for listening to this talk. I hope it inspired you to look more closely at open telemetry. If you've already adopted tracing, I hope you'll consider migrating to OpenTelemetry and that this talk helps you plan and execute that migration. If you're not already tracing in production, please consider doing so with OpenTelemetry. And finally, we're the second most active CNCF project by contributions. We'd love your help to make us number one.